Hi there. Uh, for those observant amongst you, you're going to notice two things right now. One is that I'm still in bed, and the other is that I'm wearing the same shirt that I was two days ago. And if you're putting those things together and uh, concluding that maybe I'm having a bit of a tough time right now, you're absolutely correct. Um, I've been in a fair bit of pain for the last um, 48 hours. It's all to do with my ascites, so my, my belly has expanded quite a bit. Uh, Caroline does my girth um, fairly regularly and in 24 hours um, my girth increased by two centimetres which is about a, um, three quarters of an inch uh, in one day and um, the last two days have evidently um, I'm starting to feel like I'm bursting I'm in a fair bit of pain uh, so I contacted Fiona Stanley Hospital and they were absolutely fantastic so uh, bear in mind today is Monday I'm going to be going in tomorrow for um, my blood tests and to have a investigative ultrasound, basically just to confirm that there is a bunch of ascites in there. But that's just to have a look. That's not to do anything um, medically. It's purely just to have a look. Then on Wednesday, I'm going to have an ascites drain, assuming that Tuesday uh, turns up what we think it's going to turn up. So on Wednesday, I'll go and get a drain. And then on Thursday, I've got the start of um, round six of my Folfox chemotherapy. So it's a really full on week for me. Um, I'd also say this is probably the hardest round. So, so far round five is the hardest round I've had. Um, I'm getting to the end of it now and I don't feel recovered. Whereas in rounds one to four, by the time I was getting to the end of that cycle, I was starting to feel recovered. Um, I'm now close to the end of round five and I'm not feeling recovered. I'm feeling um, tired, lethargic. I've got a metallic taste in my mouth. Um, I've got a tingling on my lips. Um, I'm, just, I'm just feeling bad. Um, and, and I know I'm not alone. A lot of you have written to me and said um, the effects of chemotherapy are uh, cumulative and that it actually gets harder as time goes by. And speaking from my own experience, that is what I have observed. And it, it, it looks like five rounds is where my body has hit a limit, where it's uh, things are starting to, to hurt and not work. I've also noticed that I'm, I'm, my skin is starting to um, uh, get various lesions and rashes and things on it. I have got this thing on my eyebrow now. Um, that Caroline noticed, but we've actually seen has been coming up for um, for quite a few weeks. So I don't know whether that's associated with the chemotherapy or whether um, it's just a, a random thing. I mean, um, uh, skin lesions are are a thing for Australians. Australia does have the highest rate of um, skin cancer in the world. So I will be keeping an eye on this. I will talk to my oncologist about it. And... Um, oh, I may even go and get a, uh, a mole scan check. I, I was actually planning to uh, never have a mole scan check again because I figured uh, I'm not going to live long enough for melanoma to get me from here. But um, if that blemish on my, above my eyebrow keeps going, then I need to, I need to find out. I, I just feel like I need to find out what it is, basically. So if that means I need to go to mole scan, then I'll go to mole scan. Uh, what else? Oh, Substack. So on my Substack account, and for those of you who don't know what Substack is, it's basically a, a blogging platform. Um, actually, that's... No, it's more than that. Um, it's a writer's platform. It's, it, it does more than just allow you to blog. It's, it, it is a writer's platform uh, for people that, that take their writing fairly seriously. I did have a, um, an, a series going on on Substack called If You Know Then You Know. And the intention of that series was to write about all the stories that people always said, man, you've led an interesting life, you should write a book or you should, there should be a movie about your life or whatever. And I started to write those stories out. So my intent was to write about um, being a raver, being a go-go dancer, then becoming a male escort, then doing the sex parties, then doing porn in Los Angeles and then um, everything that followed on after that and... Um, and, and turning out relatively normal um, at the end of it. I, I got 10 episodes in um, to, the, to the fun stuff 
before I found out I had cancer. So the first 10 episodes are about that stuff, and then episodes 11 and 12 are about cancer. And I published episode 13 just the other day, and basically episode 13 is me saying, I'm just not in the headspace to tell the rest of the stories. So if you were there, then you were there. And if you know, then you know. Um, I didn't intend for that to be uh, the the understanding behind the, the title, um, but it turns out that it is. So for the for the stories that happened after episode 10, if you know, then you know. Um, because I don't have the headspace to tell those stories. Um, there are plenty of things that happened, but um, they're, they're going to remain, at least from my point of view, they'll remain untold. Um, I have started a new series, uh, or in fact, it's actually a retelling of an old series. It's a series called The Cathartic Files, and it's a series of blogs that I wrote and originally published on my Facebook profile, and they're stories or their uh, essays, I guess, on etymology. So etymology is um, the derivations of words and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, how, how uh, language, language evolves and how, for example, English is, um, a lot of English is, uh, is Greek and Latin and Germanic and Old Norse and all, all these other languages that actually end up being English. Uh, so whilst you think you're actually speaking English, um, you're actually speaking a combination of Greek, Latin, Germanic, Old Norse, and at, at times, you know, Slavic, you know, and, and other languages again. So The Cathartic Files is um, a series of essays I wrote that, that discuss the topic of etymology. And because I'm now at the stage of my life where I'm thinking about what legacy I want to leave behind... And I, I do that thing periodically where I go and I curate my Facebook um, uh, history. And I was looking back on those and I was thinking, these are actually pretty good. And I put a fair bit of effort into researching them and writing them. And it would be a shame actually for them to disappear. So I've decided to transfer them from my personal Facebook profile into Substack. Uh, because once they're in Substack, they'll exist there in perpetuity. And, and free for everyone to read. And, you know, you, you don't have to be a Facebook friend of mine to, to read them. So I've already posted um, episode one of um, The Cathartic Files. I'll post a link down to it uh, in the description. So if you're interested in, in following me on a journey of etymology, then um, come join me on, on Substack. And if not, you don't have to. So... Uh, yeah, so like I said, um, I'm doing it pretty tough at the moment. Tomorrow, I'm hoping things are going to start to get better with the, the blood test and the ultrasound. And I think on Wednesday, they'll get a lot better um, when I get my ascites drain. So um, I'm hanging tough. I'm, I'm hanging in there. And um, and I, I do feel the cares from you. You, you guys are just awesome. Um, so thank you so much. So hit the care button and um, I'll talk to you again soon. And um, I might see you over on Substack. Okay, see ya.